रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटर सेवन चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स वर्स नंबर फोर्टीन दीज आर टीचिंग्स ऑफ प्रहलाद महाराज टू देर हिज क्लासमेट्स एंड वी रेड हाउ इज एक्सप्लेनिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ एंड इट्स यूटिलिटी इन अटेनिंग love of god and the obstacle is attachment so he gave the example of silk worm in the previous class how the silk worm you have seen so it makes a cocoon and like that everybody is bound so we are not bound by someone else but by our own desires every desire is a bondage and more desires we have more we are tightly bound so desires manifest in various ways we have attachments all around us and that's what like a bird you try the leg of the bird in the thread and then when it flies you pull him back so like that so we are meant to actually realize god that is the only purpose of human life and that is the common purpose which anyone can achieve other purposes some people are good in one field and other people are good in another one some are good in music some are good in cooking some are good in ayurveda right <laughs> but spiritual life everyone can be expert in us because this is the real purpose of human birth everyone can become enlightened everyone can become devotees why because this is what we have been given this human body so this is what is said durlabha manusa jani dehi naam hanuman guru kamara vach ashrit pragya dharman bhagavatam otherwise he says that you become like a doll in the hand of your wife or your husband so he says kutumba poshaya viyan nijayur na buddhate artham vihatam pramattah sarvatra tapatraya dukkhitatma nirvidyate na sva kutumba ramah so those who are married these days of course some of these examples don't work because people don't get married they just live together mm-hmm. and then even if they live together or even if they get married they don't produce children so previously people got married and they had children and then they are worried about kutumba posha nourishing bringing up the children so kutumba posha hai vien jaye and this is how your life goes so you have to take care of the children when they become grown up then you have to educate them then when they are young then you have to worry about their marriage when they get married when they produce children then you have to worry about grandchildren so this is how it is to be now of course there are no children forget about the grandchildren because everybody just wants to enjoy themselves and children is a big headache so you don't even go to this level of kutumba posha you are caught up even before that so kutumba posha hai vien nijayu so they are wasting their life simply in taking care of the family and buddhate artham vihatam pramatta and therefore they do not know what actually is the real purpose of life because of their madness pramatta pramatta means that you are crazy so he he does not know because it's just like you have an opportunity to make money so you live in a garden you are hungry and you can 
pluck the fruits and eat. But you just waste your time counting how many trees are there, how many mango trees, how many banana plants, right? How many kiwis? So you spend and then your time is up. You just even say half an hour, forty-five minutes, and you just wasted your time looking around. So that's what happens with human life. That our time is limited. You know, maximum one hundred years. And it just goes, just like that. Suddenly you realize that you are old. So we are near wasting your time only in this petty things. And it is good if you actually get some happiness from these things. That also one does not get. So he says, "Sarvatra tapatra dukhi tapi." So we are getting three types of suffering: suffering from your own self, sometimes headache, sometimes stomach ache, and sometimes toothache. So there is always some ache in the body. And when you grow old, then your joints, knee, right? So then you have to bend. You cannot even walk properly. So there is always pain in life. And then there is suffering which comes from others. <coughs> your partner is troubling you. Or your neighbor is bothering you, or if you are working in some office, then your boss he gives you hard time. So you are always troubled. And then third is mosquito, <laughs> fly in the daytime, night time mosquito, or too hot, too cold, no electricity. Always. Heavy storm, hail storm. So all these natural calamities, tsunami, earthquake. So these are the suffering which people, everybody has to go through these things. You are hungry. You want to eat some food. You don't get it. Many trouble. So tap traya, dukhi tapma, nirvidya tena, sukutum banana. But still, no one thinks that. Let me give this up and become a devotee. You continue with that. If you get kicked out in one job, then you find another job. If one partner leaves, then find another partner. Right? If one mosquito goes out, then another one comes in. So you never become. Frustrated in material life. No matter how much you are beaten up, so you become immune to material suffering. Otherwise, people come to spiritual life, they become frustrated, then they leave. But we should actually make these materialistic people our guru and learn from them that they never leave. They continue one after another, one after another. So this is called Swakutumba Rama. Rama means taking pleasure. Kutumba is like family. So you, you are you are just absorbed in your friend circle, your family circle, relatives, and remain. That is the cocoon. Cannot come out of that. So this is how your life goes. So Sri Vishnu Chakruti says, "Yatah kutumbat kapi deshe kutruchi dapi kalle samarth." So he says that from this kutumba, no, which is different, he says, "Vyat kshiyamanam nijam ayum purusharthat 
न हतम न स्वबुद्धते दैट योर लाइफ इज गोइंग वन डे बाय डे एवरी मॉर्निंग यू वेक अप यू हैव लॉस्ट वन डे पीपल सेलिब्रेट देयर बर्थडेज बट एक्चुअली बर्थडे इज अ डेथ डे बिकॉज इफ यू आर नाइनटीन ईयर ओल्ड मीन्स यू हैव डाइड नाइनटीन ईयर्स यू आर नाइनटीन ईयर क्लोज टू डेथ राइट बट वी आर हैप्पी आई एम नाइनटीन आई एम ट्वेंटी आई एम फिफ्टी सिल्वर जुबली डायमंड जुबली बट वट इज दैट बी हैप्पी अबाउट इट What is so great about it? I don't know. I could never understand why people celebrate birthday. <laughs> I never celebrated my birthday. I don't. I don't see what is the reason for this. You can tell me why. No, I also don't celebrate my birthday ever. It's just an excuse to eat cake. <laughs> you can eat cake anyway. Because <laughs> you're one day closer to death, right? Yes. <laughs> so every day we are one day close to death. Every day we are walking towards death, and we are feeling happy. This is our stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Is how stupid we are. <laughs> It's like you are you are going to fall in a well, and you are happy in that I'm close to him. Then celebrating your birthday is like that I'm close. I'm going to fall in this well. I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't know what is the reason. So he says, we are Sri Amanam Nijayum. पुरुषार्थम चाहतम सो नॉट ओनली दैट यू आर लूजिंग योर लाइफ ऑल्सो योर एबिलिटी आई मीन नाउ इफ यू आर ग्रोइंग इट मे नॉट बी बट वंस यू आर लाइक फोर्टी ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड आफ्टर फोर्टी ईयर्स ऑल योर एबिलिटीज योर फिजिकल पावर योर सेंस योर पावर टू सी पावर टू हियर पावर टू डाइजेस्ट एवरीथिंग स्टार्ट डिमिनिशिंग After forty, then only you realize what is the fun in life. Before that, you don't understand it. If you are, if you are not forty, you don't understand what I'm saying. Ah, uh, you have touched forty, then my words make sense. So you start losing all your powers one by one because this is all borrowed power. Everything runs because of the stomach. You know this belly, the navel. This is the center of life. That's why the baby is connected from here. So this is the Manipur chakra. This is the center of fire. So once you hit forty, then your fire starts diminishing. You cannot digest food anymore properly. Not the way you were doing it before. and the body runs on food so you start becoming weak then there is types of ailments diseases in the come so that's what is saying that you losing your life so why people have to feel happy that i am moving towards it vatika matrasya api apchayantu buddhyate evaiti bha So he says that even your digestive power, your food, everything goes down. Tada pi tas mat na nirvita pi, and still one does not wake up. So we like to sleep, not only at night, but also in the daytime. So in daytime also we are dreaming. That is called daydreaming. And dreaming is not possible without sleeping. So if you are day dreaming, that means you are day sleeping, <laughs> right? Because if you are night dreaming, you know that we sleep at night. But if you are day dreaming, then you are also sleeping in the day. 
Only thing is that you can sleep with your eyes open. Mm. So there are two ways to sleep. One with eyes closed, another with eyes open. So this, when you sleep with your eyes open, people don't recognize your sleep. <laughs> but it is going on. Mm. So although earlier Prahlad said that you waste your one third of your life sleeping, but actually you <laughs> waste more. <laughs> we, are, we are sleeping even when we are awake. So there is called sleep sleep and there is called wakeful sleep. <laughs> Two types of sleeping. So most people are sleeping. So those who are enlightened people, they are awake. And they see these people sleeping. And they try to wake them up. And whenever you try to wake up somebody who is sleeping, that person gets angry at you. Uh. Right? <laughs> That's why people did not like those who tried to wake them. Why did they crucify Jesus? Because he was trying to wake up the sleeping people. So they said, this guy is troubling our sleep, let's hang him. So they put him on the cross and then they went back to sleep. Peacefully, yes. And then there are people who sleep in his name. Because people are so used to sleeping that even when they are following somebody who is awake, they still sleep. She belongs to her. <laughs> okay, just broke off my pencil. Sorry about that. <laughs> so once, around 200 years ago, Jesus, he decided to come on earth. You heard of this famous Russian author, so. Dostoevsky? Oh, oh yeah. He's, he, he's written very nice stories. Mm -hmm. Kar what is Karma's of Brothers. Mm -hmm. oh, famous book. So it's one of his stories. So he says that Jesus, he thought that let me go to earth. He says when I came first time, there were no Christians. They were Jews and they didn't like me. But now Christianity, at least half of the world is Christian. So he said, let me go. And now I will be welcomed. And I can do my job better now. Because people will listen to me. After all, they are my followers. So he said, last time I came, I was in trouble. Now life will be smooth for me. So he came on earth. He came on Sunday and he came in this city, there was a big church. So, church, churches were still popular 200 years ago. People were still going to churches. So Sunday he came and outside the church there was a big tree. So he sat under the tree and he got that. And people come out from the church and when they are worshipping me, they will see me and then I will teach them. So the service was over in the church, then the people started coming out. And when they saw Jesus, they saw him and they said, well, he looks like Jesus. <laughs> and then there was a big crowd around him and he said, he looks like Jesus. And then everybody was laughing at him. He says, look this fellow, how nicely he is imitating Jesus. <laughs> he just looks like him, perfectly. So Jesus, he said, listen, my devotees, I'm not imitating anybody, I am Jesus. So then they started laughing more. He says, look, this fellow is now so crazy, he thinks he is Jesus. Instead of saying that he is dressed up like Jesus or he is imitating, he is saying he is Jesus. And he says, no, 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 I am not imitating anybody. So then they started making fun of him. And he is trying to preach to them that, I am your Lord, what are you doing? 
Vinky go to the church and he said, yes, were you not worshipping Jesus there? He said, yes, but I am standing here, why are you making fun of me? And I said, just see this fool. He thinks he's Jesus. He is trying to fool us. Yeah, it's okay, you look like Jesus, but doesn't mean that you are Jesus. So then the news went up to the priest and the priest came. So when Jesus saw a priest coming and he said, at least he will recognize me, because these are any ignorant people, they won't recognize me. So the priest came and he saw him and he also started laughing at him. He said, you are really expert man. You look like Jesus so perfectly. So Jesus said, what are you talking father? I am your Lord, I am Jesus. So he said, don't talk all this nonsense. So Jesus thought that when I came first time and I said that I am the Savior, they put me in trouble and after 1800 years they are still saying the same thing. So this priest, he told him that you don't recognize me, Father. And the Father said, what nonsense are you talking about? He told the people that you catch him and put him in, inside the room. So they caught him and they put him inside the room and the priest locked him. So Jesus said, at least I am fortunate that they only put me inside the room, they don't hang me. This, this much is better. So then at night he heard the noise. At midnight he heard that somebody is opening the lock. So then the priest came with a lantern. There was no electricity in those days. <laughs> so he came and he put the lantern and he touched his head on the ground and he was praying. He says, My dear Lord, I recognize you. It's not that I did not recognize, but I could not accept it in front of the crowd. Because the thing is that our business is running well without you. <laughs> <laughs> And we don't want that you create any trouble. We know that, we know that you are a troublemaker. <laughs> when you came first time, you did created such a big trouble that we have to get rid of you. And now you have come again. So I'm requesting you that please don't create trouble again. <laughs> Everything is running nicely. People are coming to church. They are listening to your sermons and they are worshipping you and they are praying all this. So I request you that now, this is midnight, everybody is sleeping and you just quietly disappear into the darkness and never come here again. <coughs> so poor Jesus has to leave. He had no choice, otherwise he knows that if he doesn't leave, then he is going to do something. Because this guy is going to create trouble for him and stop his business. So this is what people do. People are sleeping and if somebody comes to wake them up, they put him also to sleep. That he also sleep with us. Don't try to wake us up. So this is what he says, oh, this is the meaning of pramatta, this is the meaning of madness. You try to wake up a mad fellow, then he will become more mad. So he says, Sarvatra tapatraya dukhitatma nirvidya tena sokatumbaram. That people never get dissatisfied with material life. Although they are always serving, dissatisfied, not that they are not dissatisfied, but dissatisfied in the sense that give up and come to spiritual life. They don't do that. In fact, if someone is trying to do it, then everyone stops, everyone puts an obstacle to that person. If you tell your parents that you want to take to spiritual life, they will get worried. What happened to our daughter? She went to India. What is wrong with her? She went to study and what? 
So like, so I will take the next flight. Come to save you. <coughs> so this is actually the fact. So vitte su nitya vinivista cheta vidvans chedosham parivitta hartu. So he says that always the mind remains absorbed in making money. Most people's mind are absorbed around money. That's all they think, only business people, stock market, who is worried when the stock is going up, when the stock is going down. So the mind is only absorbed in vitta, in wealth. Vitta is nitya, nivishta cheta. Cheta means heart. So that heart which is actually meant to love God, it becomes absorbed in wealth. And nidvansa dosham parivitta harati. And it is not only the situation with people who are ignorant, but he says that even learned people, people who know philosophy, who understand, they also do the same thing. They also remain absorbed only in money. In the name of religion, that's what I was saying. In the name of religion, in the name of doing some religious activity, building ashram, building temple, printing books, this, the consciousness remains on money. How can I get more money? And how can I get this money to run this project, to run that project? So the mind always on the money and nothing else. So this is how the time goes. That we are living being, we are conscious being and we are worried about the inert matter. The money is inert. So, Vidvansa Dosham Paravitta Hartu. That person knows that if I steal others' money, then I will be in trouble. If you see from religious point of view, then you will go to hell. If you don't believe in that, then even from moral, ethical principles, it's not good to take someone's, steal someone's wealth. And then if you get caught, then you are prosecuted, you go to prison. So people know this, still they don't. So why they do it? Because so much attachment to money, that even knowledge cannot help. So they are pulled by it, naturally. And Pratyay Hachatya Pajitain Riyasthada Mashanta Kamo Harate Kutumbi So he understands that after death, because even if you steal, if you steal and even if you are not caught, then don't think that you will be spared. Because law of karma, will catch you sooner or later. You cannot escape that. Because inside your, your heart, God has put a video camera. So whatever you are doing, that is getting recorded in your chitta. Everything. Good or bad. And when you die, that goes with you. It's only the gross body which remains here. The subtle body goes with you and all your storage, all your wheel is going with you. So in future, it will come back to you. So you have to suffer. If you steal, then you will get disease or sickness. Sometimes parents have children. <coughs> and they are born sick and they spend so much money just 
taking care of the children. So the children actually uh, have come only to get their debt from the parents. The parents actually borrowed money and did not return. So now the lender comes as the child, as a sick child. So his sickness may be because of his own karma. This is how God arranges things. So he is meant to be sick. At the same time, the parents have to get the reaction of the money which they borrowed and did not return. So then these things are arranged like that. So they spend all their money, much more than what they had borrowed. So you cannot escape the karma. Whether someone is watching you or not watching you, God is watching you. And it's getting recorded. He is not personally standing and watching. He must put this camera on. So wherever you go, the camera goes with you. It's, it's a live camera. And it, it has an adjustable memory. It's not. Yes, so now they have this tetra. Remember? So it's a lot. And just megabytes. But now it's in tetras. So like that you have unlimited memory in your camera inside. And everything remains recorded for hundreds of lives. It can be traced. So therefore Pratyaya Chathabhya Ajitendriyas So the problem is Ajitendriya because we have no control over our mind basically and then the senses. So we are forced. Anichannapi Vashne Baladi Vhaniyanapi Sometimes we know that this is wrong. I should not eat it. But still we are forced to eat it. Because I have no control over my tongue. So Arjuna asked this question that how is this? Anichannapi Vashne Baladi Vhaniyanapi I really don't I know that I don't want it but something forces me to do it. So some people are what they call obsessive thieves kleptomaniacs kleptomaniac? <coughs> so they just have the habit of stealing they have done so much stealing that it becomes their nature they can't live without it. Just like you get addicted to smoking, you cannot live without it. So they become so habituated by it. So this is because of Ajitendriya, not having control. So Kamesha Krodha is a Rajagun Samudha, Mahasuno Mahapurna, Buddhayanam Yeh, Vidhayanam Yeh, Vairinam. So this desire inside which is never satisfied like fire which is never satisfied by the fuel doesn't matter how much fuel you put inside the fire it's never satisfied fire is like hunger so you eat food and your hunger is quenched but the desires in the mind is like fire you put fuel into it, more wood, and it burns, more and more, more and more, there is no end to it. So that's why he says that, this is Ajitendriya. Ashant Kamo Harte Kutum. So Ashant Kamo means that this Kama, this desire, lust, greed, anger, they are causing disturbance. So one remains disturbed all the time. Something or the other is always disturbing the mind. It's not peaceful. Otherwise you can be happy without anything. Whatever, wherever you are and whatever you are, in that situation itself you can be completely happy. If your mind becomes peaceful. So, but mind is not peaceful. Therefore Krishna says that Ashantasya kutaha sukham 
And how can one be happy if the mind is disturbed? And he says that disturbed mind is our greatest enemy. We think our enemies are outside. But the real enemy is sitting inside. The real problem is inside us, not outside. And because the problem is inside, then it manifests outside. So the person who is making you angry is not the cause of anger. The anger is inside you. He is only showing you that you have anger. He says, look, my dear girl, you actually have anger. Even if you have this nice smile on your face. So when you get angry, it's like he or she is showing you the mirror it's to you that you have this anger inside. Because if the anger is not inside you, then no one can make you angry. People are get cheated by others because they have desire for something. They have some greed inside. And this Clever people, they take advantage of their greed. They want to make quick money. So these people will come with a plan, how you can make quick money. <coughs> and they convince you. And then they take your money. They say, well, for this you have to charge this much. And whatever little money you have, they run away with that all. So this is because we have greed to begin with. If we didn't have the greed, then they cannot treat me. So we have the problem inside us and the biggest problem is in the mind. This restless mind. This is the problem. And unless we find a solution for it, then no matter where you go, your mind goes with you. Sometimes people say, oh, I want to go to the beach to get some peace. <laughs> but you can take your mind there. So at beach also you fight. So unless you solve the problem inside, <coughs> the problem outside will remain. And when, it, when your mind becomes peaceful, then no one can destroy you. So thus, there is nothing to disturb. There is no hook inside you which I can hold on to and shake you up. Fair enough. So that is possible by becoming devotee. That's what Prahlam is saying. That's what he was saying. Kaumaro Vashrek Prabhu Dharman Bhagavatam. So, Durlabho Vanu So, so Tadapya Dhrum Arthadam. That although it is rare, but this can give you permanent peace. So, this is, some, this is what we should experience. People try to experience many things in their life drugs, smoking, drinking, sex. It's useless. This we have done so many times in the past. There is nothing which you have not done in the past. It's only that you have forgotten. But one thing which you have not done is practice for devotion, practice for enlightenment. Because if you have done that, you won't be here. So the very proof that you are here means this is what you have not done. So if you want to really experience something new, then you experience this. Otherwise, you are only experiencing something which you have experienced. This is what he said earlier, charvit, punas punas charvita charvita nam. That you are only chewing the chute. You are just chewing the chingam. There is nothing in the chingam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is there? You just keep on moving your guns for nothing. Flesh away eva sushyate. There is only labor. There is nothing which comes out. But because there is so much passion, that you only chew the chin for nothing. Somebody should pay you to do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because someone asked, why are you moving your mouth for nothing? 
So this is because Ajitendriya, no control. This time you cannot control your mind, you cannot control moving your jaw. Some people have the habit of just talking. So they just love to talk. So Ajitendriya. So he is basically giving all these examples how we waste our time. And we have to seriously think about it. Because he is, he is a serious person, he is not joking. And he has experienced it. Because he did not drop from the sky. So Sri Vishnu Chakrut says, Pratyaya Narka Lakshanam Ihacha Rajdandadi Rupam Dosham Yadapi Vidwan Tadapi Tani Vittani he says that the person actually knows the problem with stealing. That number one, after death he has to suffer as a reaction. And number two, if he gets caught here then he will be punished by the government. And yet he doesn't. Why? Because no control. So that shows how much free we are. To talk about freedom. So we are all controlled in some ways by our senses. In case of thief it is more visible but even in our own life we are guided by our senses. We are controlled by them and therefore we suffer. Vidvana Pitham Danuja Kutumbam Pushnan Svalokaya Nakalpate Vai Yasviya Parakya Vibhinna Bhava Stama Prapadde Tayatha Vimodha So he says that O demons He says O demoniac child, children that even a learned person in this way remains engaged just taking care of his family Pushnam Avalokayana Kalpatevi and does not see his own ultimate good and he thinks himself as different from God and then he thus makes these divisions of I and my and yours and you and remains fallen in this duality and he is in darkness just like an ignorant person. So therefore scholarship does not mean that someone knows a lot or someone can recite scriptures or someone can answer your questions but how is one leading one's life? The proof of scholarship is not in giving lectures and impressing others but in being peaceful oneself. So yeah, Arjuna was also speaking scholarly but Krishna said Asur Chanan Vasur Chastvam Pragya Vadansya Bhasha Shri Gatasuna Gatasuna Nanu Sochanti Pali that you speak big words scholar, big scholar but you are grieving, you are in grief for these people who are not even killed yet they are already in grief so where is your scholarship? where is your wisdom? so he says those who are really wise they don't grieve so if one is actually learned if one is actually wise then it should reflect in his or her actions. One should be peaceful, stable, undisturbed under all circumstances. And if one is becoming disturbed by small things, then what, what, what is the worth of such scholars? They say then what is the difference between this person and another 
some illiterate and educated person. Because in behavior both are same. Mm-hmm. He is lamenting, he is also lamenting. So no difference. So Vidvanapi Shastra Gyopi Swalokaya Koham Kim Karomi Iti Sum Avalokyatum. So Vidwan means learned and here he means one who knows scriptures. So he says even if he knows the scriptures, but if he does not understand who he is or she is and what he or she should do in life, if the one is confused, then it's not a good one. And doing the same things which the other one is doing. So if someone is reading scriptures and doing puja, and then after that doing the same thing which anyone else is doing means same kind of attachments one has and one suffers in the same way and there's no difference. So Krishna does not call such person as Vidwan in Bhagavad Gita and Prahlad also does not. Yatha vimudha stathai vahe He says he is as like any other foolish person. Yato ne kashit kvacha kutrachit kva dina svamatmana malam samartha vimochita kama drisha vihara kuda mivoyan nivudo visargaha. So he says the reason is that this person he cannot help himself, he cannot help others. So he is bound and he is like a toy in the hands of his wife or girlfriend because they are playing with him. And then he is tied shackles to his own feet in the form of his family members, children, etc. So that means wisdom means to be free from all this. Not that you cannot have wife or husband or children. You can have them. There is no problem. The problem is in the attachment. It's like the story of Jad Bharat. There was a king. He gave up his kingdom. He went to Nepal. He was living on the bank of Ganki River to make a hut. He was meditating, worshipping, chanting mantra. He was a great devotee. And he went to the river, Gandaki river, famous river in Nepal. And he saw one female deer, what he called dog, drinking water. And she was pregnant. And then one tiger came from behind. And tiger roared. She became afraid and out of fear she jumped the river. Because in the mountain area rivers are not very wide. But when she jumped, her baby fell off from the womb in the water. And then she ran away. And tiger also ran away. So this king, he was seeing it, then he went and he rescued the baby and brought to the ashram and took care. So there was nothing wrong with it. But then he became very attached to the deer. So much that he forgot his chanting, mantra, meditation, worship. He was only in the thoughts of this deer. Where is the deer? Where is the deer? Deer became very dear to him. And he has to pay a dear price for that. (laughs) Because in the next life he became a deer. (laughs) So this is because of attachment, not because of compassion. There is nothing wrong with compassion, but you have to remember that there is God everywhere. But when you forget that, then you make distinction, this is my dear. And then you are taking care. So when he was dying, he was only thinking of this dear, where has he gone? And because he died thinking of dear, he became dear. So he says that with a learned person also, therefore is tied in the same way. And he just becomes an object of entertainment for his wife and children. He is only working 
to give pleasure to them. So just like children play with the toys, they are playing with the person. The children will start crying, I want this, I want this. And the father has to listen. And again the other one they keep on crying. So he says that such a person is actually poor. Even if he is rich. Even such a person is actually pitiable. Even if he is learned. So people have pity only on poor people. But actually rich people also deserve to be pitied because they are suffering in the same way. Unless one has spiritual realization, spirituality only, one is living spirituality, one is poor. So this is very interesting point. So therefore they are unable to give it up. Alam Vishwarna, Swamatmana Alam Vishwarna. So Vimochi Tum Kama Darsham Vihara Krida Mrigo Vyan Nigado Vishwarna. So Nigado means shackle in the feet. Yataha Kutumbath Kvapi deshe kvachidapi kale samartha shastra gyanadi samarthya vanapi kashidapi atmanam sviyam va mimochetu valam na shaknoti. So although he has scriptural knowledge, but he cannot liberate himself or anyone else from this bondage. So this, this type of knowledge is only burden. Sargo janma bhavet apurga Atmanam ityasya visheshnam samas pathe kartri visheshnam ya kaam drishaya nigado yatrita bhavan So he is remains here in the material world and continues to suffer So this is his instruction I will stop here if there is any question on this Actually, this word sometimes are a little bit misleading. <coughs> you see, this love is enjoyment in itself. And this love, even material love, if you have experience, this gives you pleasure. When you when you earn money, then money by itself is not useful. <coughs> money is useful to get something. Right? So money in itself has no meaning. If you have lots of money and you cannot buy anything with it, then what will you do with this money? Like in Germany they were taking, in the second world war, they used to carry money in the wheelbarrow. So money is for something and that something is for something. And if you analyze like this, ultimately everything is for happiness. But happiness is not for anything else. Right? Happiness is not that from happiness we want something. So love and happiness are synonyms. Love is not for some, from love you don't want anything else. Love itself is happiness. Means this is the end. So when we say Krishna is enjoying and we are enjoyed, it's only in love. That does not mean that you are not enjoying. You understand? 
there is enjoyment for you also. Because there is love. So love, love is its own reward. Love is, love means to serve the object of love. But that does not mean that you expect anything in return. That's doing service itself is pleasing. So when we say that you are enjoyed by him, that itself is pleasure. And I said words have limitation because in the material world we think that one who is enjoyer is the enjoying and the enjoyed is just enjoyed. No, enjoyed is also enjoying. In the spiritual world there is no duality like that. In the material world, that the duality is there, that the master is there, and there is an employer servant, and the master is having fun, and the servant is suffering. But in the spiritual world, also there is a master servant relationship, and both are enjoying. The servant is also enjoying, in fact, more than the master <laughs> by serving. So, this is a different concept. That is the meaning of absolute enjoying, enjoyment. And in the material world it is relative, dualistic. When you enjoy, you enjoy at the expense of someone. But in the spiritual world you don't enjoy at the expense of someone. Everybody enjoys. That is But this love, this, this enjoyment, doesn't come from even this world. Like when you talk about family and friends and everything, you said that compassion is okay. But is love okay? It's just taking But is love is love? okay if it is unconditional love. See, the love here in the material world is also conditional. It, it always has some attachment in it. It is not pure. That's why it can turn into hate. Hatred. Even for family and friends. Yeah. yeah, your brothers and siblings, they start fighting with each other. They were in love. Boyfriend, girlfriend, they start hating each other. What if we understand though that in any that no matter what happens, they're they are God, they're part of God and we can for, like accept and then you will not suffer. That is the unconditional love. So when you are in conditional love, then there is no suffering. You will feel pleasure just by having it. And this will influence others. It is infectious. It will infect others. It's very powerful. There is nothing more powerful than love. Even material love. Small child controls big parents. Only because they love him. If they don't love him, they'll throw him down like Hiran Nekasupur did you saw? Mm. He threw the child down on the ground. Mm. Otherwise he was crying. Big Hiran Nekasupur, everyone afraid of him. And little Prahlad. Because of love, he was under the control of Prahlad. But when that love went out, because it was material love, conditional love, then he threw him on the ground and says, kill this fellow. This is material love. Mm -hmm. It can change into hatred any time. I mean, so many examples in daily life. But the unconditional love is always... Unconditional always love is never changing like this. It's, and it's always blissful. Mm -hmm. Always. You never get tired of it. You say that a uh, person can have any amount of knowledge, but uh, if, if he doesn't uh, act on that knowledge, he's like same as an uh, ordinary person. Yeah, just like suppose you have money, right? Mm -hmm. And there is another person who, who does not have money. Mm -hmm. So the other person who does not have money is starving and he cannot buy food because he has no money. And you have money, but you don't buy food, and you also starve. So what is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you are equal. <laughs> you are more stupid. <laughs> Except that you are more stupid. <laughs> That's the only difference. Because I was talking to 
one that uh, also if a person uh, have knowledge, this knowledge itself, because it's so pure and it's so strong, makes makes the difference. But actually, if you don't if you don't put it in practice and you don't mm. let it, you know, don't act on, on mm. it, then it's, it's good and not good. Mm. 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 What was the burden of statement about knowledge being a burden? Yeah, if you don't use it, then it's just a burden. Mm. It's like if you have money and you don't use it, mm. and you're just protecting it. So thank you for listening. Thank you for speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we would be sitting in awkward silence. <laughs>